My name is Emma. It has been a year since I married my husband Noor, and we are soon approaching our second anniversary. Noor and I have been dating since our university days, and our relationship has always been great. We attended a university outside of our hometown, so we lived in a rented apartment away from our families. Because of that, we had plenty of free time to spend together. Not only during long breaks, but also on regular days off, we would take on various part-time jobs and go on trips to different places. After graduating, both of us found jobs in Florida and became working professionals. Around two years into our careers, Noor proposed to me, and we got married. I was truly happy. However, there was one issue. The mother of my husband Noor. She was a woman with a strong personality, and I sensed that from the first time we met. It happened when I visited his parents' house for the first time after our marriage was decided. As we sat in the living room and guessed in casual conversation, Noor's mother suddenly called out to him, "Noor, could you bring some tea snacks, please?" He replied, saying. I'll also make fresh tea while I'm at it. And with that, he headed towards the kitchen. Left alone with my mother-in-law, I couldn't help but feel nervous and remained silent for a while. And then my mother-in-law said, "Emma, I heard you and Noor met in college, so that means you have the same level of intelligence as Noor, right?" She stared at me intently as she spoke. I could feel the pressure coming from my mother-in-law, but I knew I could be intimidated at this moment. Yes, that's correct. Although Noor's academic performance was far better than mine, I tried to divert the conversation by praising him. In response, my mother-in-law said, "Well, of course, that's only natural, isn't it?" Just by looking at you, I can tell you are not very sharp. She began to laugh. What is wrong with this woman? I couldn't tell if she disliked me, but she was certainly displaying an attitude of looking down on me. However, considering that she was the mother of the person I loved and this was our first meeting, I remained silent. Then my mother-in-law glanced at me and said. Well, anyway, you two will probably break up eventually. Huh? Caught off guard by her sudden remark, I was at a loss for words when Noah returned. What? Were you talking about something? Not really. I was just asking about the nature of your relationship. That's all. She said casually and started another trivial conversation. The change in my mother-in-law's attitude was so drastic that it filled me with fear. Even after returning home, I couldn't help but wonder why she said such things to me. Did I do something to offend her? I had no idea and ended up feeling frustrated as the evening went on. From that point on, my mother-in-law never made snide remarks about me in front of Noor. She simply kept saying, "Break up soon." As our wedding with Noah drew near, I couldn't stand the lingering unease any longer, so I decided to tell Noah the truth. Actually, I have been keeping this to myself, but your mother has been telling me to break up with you ever since we first met. I confessed, and Noah widened his eyes in disbelief. That can't be true. Mother would never say something like that. At first, he found it hard to believe, but when he saw me crying, he realized it was true. I'm sorry for not noticing. I'll talk to my mother about this. He assured me. The next day, as promised, Noah contacted his mother. Don't ever say anything strange to Emma again. 
my intention to marry her hasn't changed, he firmly declared. Since then, my mother in law stopped making snide comments towards me, and we had a peaceful wedding ceremony, blessed by many well wishers. However, after that, we tried to avoid going to my in law's house as much as possible. Of course, there were occasions and family events where we had to gather at their place, so we would discuss it with my husband and try to attend as best as we could. But ever since we got married, my mother in law started making snide remarks to me without any concern for my husband's presence. Why can't you do such simple things? How could you think of getting married and starting a family? She'd incessantly say such things. Furthermore, she would tell me to help with housework, so I asked, What should I do? But she completely ignored me. And when I tried to do something I thought was helpful, I didn't ask you to do that. Figure out what needs to be done and act accordingly. She unreasonably scolded me. Every time my mother in law yelled at me, I felt like crying. But I endured it for the sake of my husband. And whenever my mother in law raised her voice in anger, my husband would immediately come to my defense. Mother, cut it out. If you keep saying weird things, we'll leave. He always stood up for me like that. When my husband got angry, my mother in law would grumble, but eventually quiet down. That's how I managed to endure. My husband would say, You don't have to force yourself to go back to my parents' house. But as someone who had married into the family, I wanted to get along with my mother in law as much as possible, and I hoped to earn her approval someday. That's why I couldn't afford to make a fuss over such things. For the sake of my husband, I needed to become a daughter in law recognized by my mother in law and cultivate a good relationship. With my limited abilities, that's what I thought. During the New Year's visit to my in law's house, as expected, Noah came to my rescue, so I had stopped worrying about my mother in law so much. When we returned home from my in law's house, I'm sorry, Emma, my mother, once again. He apologized and I said, It's okay. Thank you for always standing up for me, Noah. I expressed my gratitude. Noah chuckled in a troubled manner and said, I'm going to take a bath. Saying that, he headed to the changing room. After my husband came out of the bath, we discussed the schedule for work after the new year. Then my husband said, I might have more business trips coming up. He suddenly mentioned that. Since there had been business trips about once every few months before, I didn't think much of it and replied, I see, it's going to be tough. But a few days later in the evening, the dates for the business trip have been decided. It's next weekend. My husband, who came home from work, brought up the topic. It was the first time that a business trip was decided so suddenly, so I was surprised. But he said, There's a crucial deal that might come through. He said that, and I couldn't help but admire how seriously he was dedicated to his work. Since I was also continuing with my own job, it didn't mean that I would feel lonely all day just because my husband was on a business trip. On the contrary, knowing that my husband was working hard motivated me to do the same. I said to my husband, I understand, don't push yourself too hard, okay? And my husband replied, Thanks, I'm going to take a bath. Saying that, he took off his shirt and headed to the bathroom. I picked up the shirt my husband had left lying around, feeling a bit annoyed, and decided to take it to the washing machine. But then, I noticed something odd. There was a faint trace of lipstick line staying on the chest area of the shirt my husband was wearing. In an instant, 
an unpleasant premonition crossed my mind, and I hastily stuffed the shirt into the washing machine. No way! There's no chance Nora would do something like that. I tried to convince myself that it couldn't be true and quickly returned to the living room. Then, almost as it timed perfectly, my husband's phone, which he had left on the sofa, vibrated. With the unsettling feeling growing inside me, I couldn't resist the urge to look at my husband's phone screen, even though I knew it was wrong. And there it was, displayed on the screen, ever. Maybe it was just a colleague from work, but there was also the possibility of an affair. With that thought in my mind, I mustered up the courage and answered the call. Hello? As I said that, oh, why? She said, and then the call abruptly ended. It was clearly the voice of a young woman. If it was just someone from work, there's no reason for them to hang up so abruptly. Thinking that, I immediately felt something was off and started searching through my husband's phone right then and there. Inside my husband's phone, I found numerous exchanges with his multiple affair partners. The content of their conversations made it clear that they were more than just friends. It seemed like they were planning a trip together next weekend. Next weekend? The same day my husband mentioned going on a business trip. It's not a business trip. This is undoubtedly an affair. With that realization, I was surprisingly calm even to myself. I transferred the exchanges between my husband and his affair partner, as well as the couple's photos I found in the photo folder, to my own phone and waited for my husband to come out of the bath. During that wait, I didn't shed a single tear, and for some reason, I didn't feel anger either. I was just endlessly wondering how it had come to this. Those thoughts were swirling around in my head. After a while, my husband finished his bath and stepped out. Ah,、oh, that was a good bath, he said in his usual tone. I asked him, Hey, Nor, where are you going on your business trip next weekend? My husband didn't show any signs of nervousness and replied, I'm going to LA. I bring you back a souvenir. In that moment, I felt something inside me crumble. I see. Was this person always someone who could lie so easily? It was the moment when I had completely had enough of him. A business trip to LA? That's not true, is it? I calmly told my husband, Was it ever? She seems like a young girl. You have a lot of nerve lying about a business trip and going on vacation instead. Did you look at my phone without permission? I was a little surprised. Instead of getting flustered when asked about his affair, my husband was now lashing out at me. I received a call. It said ever, so I thought it was someone from work. It seemed urgent. So I picked it up. But then a woman answered. She hung up immediately. So I thought it was suspicious. I explained calmly to my husband. It's terrible to look at someone else's belongings without permission. At that moment, I completely gave up hope. Maybe he would deny having an affair. It was a faint expectation, but it was possible. That he was lying about cheating altogether. However, my husband didn't deny the affair and instead blamed me for my actions of asking about it. I'm at my limit. Let's get a divorce. When I said that, my husband fell silent. Why are you silent? You cheated, didn't you, Nor? As long as I don't find out, everything's fine. You had such a casual attitude about it, didn't you? My husband let out of sight and said, Fine, I get it. Let's get a divorce. I'll do it for you. At that moment, I felt a pain in my chest that was indescribable. It wasn't physical pain, but it was the most painful feeling I had ever experienced. I tried to hold back tears and headed back to my room, but my husband stopped me and said, 
My mom's coming over tomorrow. What? Why? Your mother has nothing to do with this. When I said that, my husband walked past me and went into his room. Anyway, that's how it is. I didn't understand what was going on, and tears of anger and frustration started to flow. All of the pent up frustration I had been holding against my mother in law and the sadness from my husband's betrayal mixed together and flowed out. The next day, my mother in law arrived. I ignored her and sat down in the chair. Emma, you know about Ava, don't you? What? Ava, you know everything, don't you? My mother in law smirked at me as she said that. How do mother in law know about Ava? When I asked her that, my mother in law revealed something I had never imagined. Why? It's because I introduced Ava to Noor. What? Everything went dark in front of me. My mother in law continued talking, completely unfazed. Ava is a good girl who goes to the same yoga class as me. I don't need a daughter in law like you who can't be of any use. At that moment, I looked at my husband, but he didn't even look at me, let alone show any concern for me. All of my anger boiled up, and I said coldly, I take everything I bought with me. My mother in law laughed and said triumphantly, I don't need your used and dirty things. So I took a deep breath and said to my mother in law and husband, I see. Well then, please leave right away for now. Huh? My mother in law looked at me with wide eyes. In response to her, I said, All the furniture, appliances, and of course, this house, I bought them all under my name. When I said that, my mother in law started trembling in disbelief. You must be lying. Noah hasn't contributed even a dollar? There's no way. As my mother in law panicked, my husband spoke up. Mom, it's true. This house and all the furniture were bought by Emma's parents. That's impossible. Are you really going to give up such a nice house? We have no choice. Come on, help me pack our things. I'm leaving. When my husband said that, my mother in law reluctantly started helping him pack. Please leave quickly. I will call the police. Saying that, the two of them hurriedly packed their things and left the house. It seemed that the woman my husband had an affair with had no idea he was married. So she came to me to apologize. Ava quickly ended her relationship with my ex husband, and apparently, she even blocked his calls. With nowhere else to go, my ex husband returned to his parents' house. However, in the neighborhood near their place, rumors had already spread that the mother in law instigated her son to cheat, and the husband got caught cheating and was kicked out of the house. It's become quite a challenge for him to even step outside now. It seems. On the other hand, I took a long awaited paid vacation and went on the trip with my parents. They were worried about me, but I have completely let go of any lingering feelings. I may be fed up with marriage, but I still believe the family is something to cherish. From now on, I want to prioritize relationships with people who truly value me.